this book wrecked me. Today we're going to be talking about And the Band Played On by Randy Schultz, Politics, People, and the AIDS epidemic. It was later adapted into a movie directed by Roger Spottiswood, produced by HBO. Great movie, but if you really want to learn about the AIDS epidemic, this is well worth your time. It's a little over 600 pages, but it is enthralling, frustrating. Um, it's essential history. Um, this thing goes over the various failures of institutions across the board, uh, from the media um, to medical institutions, right from journalism to the CDC, um, the, from politics, um, the, Reagan, the Reagan administration, both terms, and just the utter failure um, within these um, institutions. It's just awful, like reading this. It's like reading a slow motion train wreck. Um, one of the, I'm going to read a couple excerpts just to give you a good feel. Um, regarding the media, the media watchdogs had gone to sleep on this story. Because of it, government agencies on both the federal and local levels were left to deal and to not deal with the AIDS epidemic as they saw fit. This would not be obvious at first, for the government appeared to spring into action at the sight of this first media blitz. So you'd have just like media outlets trying to get rid of the whole homosexual stigma and like they just crossing out like trying to find out what is more palatable to the general public with this epidemic which incensed the gay community. Um, the gay community was getting ravaged by this disease. Um, one of the other frustrating things that when I first saw the movie was how the blood banks acted. And this goes into great detail about that and just the blood transfusions and how like this disease starting out as Carposi's sarcoma, just evolving into this thing called, that we now know as AIDS, and doctors like Don um, Bob Callow and Don Francis just feuding over this thing and not getting very little resolve over it. Um, the other devastating fact was learning about the incredibly long incubation period, um, five to seven years, just awful. Um, one of the paragraphs that really just enraged me um, was the complete impotent, impotence on the part of the Reagan administration. And I'm going to read you an excerpt. On the night President Reagan final, finally spoke, Paul Popham was three weeks dead, having gone to his grave profoundly disillusioned with the United States, the country in which he had always believed, the country for which he had always fought for in Vietnam. This country had turned its back on Popham and his friends and let them die, and now Reagan refused to talk about Paul Popham or any of the gay men who had shown such courage for so many years as if Popham had played an embarrassing role in the epidemic and not Reagan himself. And when Reagan started talking about testing, as if he were really proposing policies that might at last do something to stop the epidemic, the anger of six years welled up inside Larry Kramer and he began to cheer. By the time President Reagan had delivered his first speech on the epidemic of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, 36,058 Americans had been diagnosed with the disease, 20,849 had died. Just startling facts. 
And one of the things the book does that the movie doesn't is it, the movie kind of cuts out an entire character, um, Larry Kramer, who would go on to, he would release the book Baggots um, in like 1978, I believe, and it critiqued the, the gay community. Um, and he would later go on to write the play in The Normal Heart, and he became a big critic of what was like happening, um, the response to this epidemic. So yeah, it's, if there's one book, I mean, it's that I recommend reading during Pride Month, it's this one. It's thoughtful and insightful and it's essential to understand where LGBTQ community, how far, like, this, where they are today. Thanks. Um...